Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Biology Resumption. So today we are going to attempt the Cambridge IGCSC Biology Paper 6 Alternative to Practical, the 0610 Paper 6 Variant 3. This is the May-June 2024 series. So if you have any questions relating to this uh, ATP paper, feel free to comment down in the comment sections below and I will reply as usual like my previous past paper videos. So let's start off with this video today. So question number one, catalase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen. A student investigated the activity of the catalase in tissues from two different plants. The oxygen produced during the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide forms a foam. The height of the foam can be used as a measure of the activity of the catalase present in plant tissue. So again, let's start with by breaking down this question. So the question has asked uh, to, to investigate the activity of the catalase. So this is the IV of the question. Okay, and then the DV. The DV is the, the height of the foam. Okay, or you can say that the foam which is being produced. So the student will use this method by labeling this test tube, cut a cylinder, and then you can see that it's in a cylindrical shape about approximately 4 mm in length and then they put all 5 potato pieces in the test tube and they repeat the step 3 and 4 use a syringe to put 15 centimeter cube of hydrogen peroxide okay and start the stop clock and wait for 5 minutes and after 5 minutes place a ruler against the outside of the test tube and measure the maximum height of the foam so now they have given you the results of test tube P and test tube A in step 8 and 9 and A part 1 asks you to measure the maximum height of the foam in the test tube and test tube P and test tube A in figure 1.2. Prepare a table and record these measurements in your table. So it has to be in millimeter. So if your results in your ruler has given you 2.8 centimeter, make sure to times 10 to make it into 28 millimeters. Okay, so now we have the sample of potato and apple. So you write here sample and potato and apple. The height of the foam you measure. Okay, you can measure your ruler here. And then you can get your measurement. Same for this. Okay, and then your answers should be in millimeters. Make sure you have this unit in your table because this is also counted as uh, some marks in there. Okay, part two. State a conclusion for the result. So what you can see is that the potato has a greater catalase activity than apple. That's just it. Because the higher the foam, right, the, the higher the maximum height of the foam has been given, it means that there's more uh, catalase activity occurring. Part 3. State the independent and dependent variable in this investigation. So it can be either the species of the plant, the type of plant, or the type of tissue. Why? Because we are using either potato or apple, which are both different species of plants, and or you can say that a different type of plant also. The dependent variable, as we mentioned in the question that we highlighted here, is the height of the foam. This will be the dv. Okay, now... We we'll go to the next one. State two variables that were kept constant in this investigation. For any question that has constant, uh, uh, constant CV or constant variable, you can always check whether it's the solution they've added remains constant. Like for example, 15 centimeter cube is being placed in test tube P. And then at the same time, test tube A is also being added the same. So you can always mention it's either the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide or the volume of the hydrogen, per uh, hydrogen peroxide solution. You can also say the time interval is the same. We are using the stopwatch and stop. At, we start at the same time, stop at the same time, and you record the set of time intervals. It has to be the same for all experiments being made. And you can also say the size, the number of pieces of plant tissue. We are always, we are, since the experiment only used one, so this is the constant variable. So part five, identify one possible source of error in step eight and describe an improvement to the method that will eliminate this error. So error in step eight, you can see that in step eight, they mentioned that we place a ruler against the outside and measure the maximum height of the phone. But the problem is, is that every height is not constant. You can see that it's not the same. So you can mention that the surface of the foam is uneven. And what is the improvement? We can measure the volume of the gas. And how can we measure the volume of the gas? We can use a gas syringe. Or you can submerge underwater 
which you can use it as a displacement method, a water displacement method. And part six, identify one safety hazard when carrying out this investigation and describe how the risk of this hazard could be reduced. So safety hazard is that you cut on the hard surface and method of reducing risk is by wearing gloves. Okay, so this is the correct answer. B, describe how you could test samples of potato and apple to determine if vitamin C is present. Give the result of a positive test. So the, if you memorize this, you have to memorize all of the tests like reducing sugar, uh, starch test, uh, fat test, uh, DCPIP is the vitamin C. Okay, that's pretty much it. And the protein test. So you add DCPIP and what's the result? The solution will decolorize or it becomes colorless. Okay. Part C. Amylase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of starch to form reducing sugars. Plan an investigation to determine the effect of temperature on the rate of breakdown of starch by amylase. So they say the effect of temperature. So this will be the IV. The DV is say that how long is it going to form the break form reducing sugar because it says the rate of breakdown. So the faster it broke down, it's the faster you can identify it is a reducing sugar. So how do you identify what um what test reducing sugar is by the Benedict solution? So now they have asked you for we use the I don't really care so run away method. So the IV is the you just write down the temperature they're going to use. You're going to use 30, 40, 50 degrees. Give at least two minimum temperatures that you're going to use. And the DV is to see the time taken for positive result in reducing sugar. So because they mentioned the rate, it relates to time. The method, you can mention that how are you going to maintain 30 degrees? How are you going to maintain 40 degrees? How are you going to maintain 50 degrees? It's by using a thermostatically controlled water bath. So these four words must be together. It cannot be just thermostatically water bath. It cannot be water bath on its own. It has to be thermostatically controlled water bath. And how are we going to test for reducing sugar? It's by using the Benedict test. So you just mentioned this, you're already getting a mark. The CV is the concentration of the starch because the amount of starch, it affects um, your rate of breakdown at the, at the same time. So it has to be the same concentration of starch, starch, same volume of starch being added. And then the pH, there's also many, many more answers that you can add. It's such like concentration of the amylase, the volume of the amylase, the sampling interval, or the concentration of the testing agent, which is the Benedict, uh, the Benedict solution. So later on, we're going to mention the repeat. Two or more repeats are done. And then we can mention that we wear gloves to avoid hot water splashing, which can cause burns. All right, so this is your answer. Now, let's go to question number two. Figure 2.1 is a photomicrograph of part of an egg case from a species of stick nest, Acrophylla titan. So A part one, draw a large diagram of the part of the egg case shown in figure 2.1. So you can just draw this. So what do the mark scheme actually want? It's just to make sure that your single clear unbroken line, the size is greater than half the space provided. And detail one is by the dark circle in the top. So you must draw this one. This is very important. And then you say, and two parallel lines on the left side of the capitulum, which is this one. The two lines have to be drawn. And the fibers around the operculum. So these are the fibers. You have to draw all of these also. So you can just draw a few samples of it to show that you, you know that the fibers are there. Now, part two, line PQ on figure 2.2 represents the length of the whole egg case. So the actual length of the egg case is 4.5 millimeters. So measure the length of the line PQ on figure 2.2, which is 92 millimeters. So your answer can be about plus two, uh, minus two. And then you give your answer as a whole number by finding the magnification. You can use the length of the line divided by the actual length. So it'd be 92 divided by 4.5. 4.5 is at here. And you're going to get times 20.4. So they want it in whole number. So 0.4 will round off to the zero, which is times 20 only. So the answer is times 20. Part three, figure 2.3 shows the photomicrograph of the egg cases of Acrophylla titan and another species of stick insect, long called this Amaurops. The magnification of both photomicrograph is the same. So state three visible differences between the two egg cases shown in figure 2.3. So you can mention that Acrophylla is larger in size than long codis. 
and Acrophyla has a hole on the top, okay, you can see here, and Longcordis has a projection, this is the projection. Acrophyla doesn't have a base, so it has a curved base, while for Longcordis, it has a, a proper base, lah, actually, okay. So part B, the rate of respiration in a stick insect can be measured using a simple respirometer as shown. As the stick insect respires, the drop of the color liquid moves along the capillary tube. So record the position in mm of the drop of the color liquid in the capillary tube shown in figure 2.1 at the start and the after 30 minutes. So they ask it to be in millimeters. So the ruler itself is at centimeter. So for me, I can see there's about 5.2. You can either measure from 5.2 or 5.4. For me, I choose 5.2. So I'm going to get 52. So 52 is my first answer. And the same thing for here. I'm getting 16 or you can put 18. Either way works. So you just put a 16. And then the capillary tube has an internal radius of 0 0.25 meters. So they're given you the R is 0 0.25 millimeters. Using the information, calculate the volume of oxygen used by the stick insect in 30 minutes. So you can see that the entire thing here is, is a, cil a cylinder. So how are you going to measure this is by using pi R square H. So again, you have to apply your mathematical understanding there's no formula going to give given to you. You use through your understanding in mathematics. So pi r square h is by taking pi times 0 0.25 square because it's r square. You get it from here times 52 minus 16. Use this minus 16 and you're going to get 7.07 .07 millimeter cube. And using your answer in 2b part 2, calculate the rate of oxygen. So you have found out the volume is 7.07 .07. now you want to divide by the time because the rate is always volume over time so the time is being given is 30 minutes so you maintain here because the question the answer they've given you is in per minute so you don't have to change to second don't have to change to hours so just take 7.07 .07, divided by 30 you're going to get 0 0.24 meter millimeter cube per minute now part c Scientists use a respirometer to investigate the effects of temperature or the rate of oxygen used by stick insects. The results of the investigation are shown in table 2.1. So you can just draw. This is how the graph that I have done. So you can just use this as a form of reference. And then once you are done with this, you can say use your graph to estimate the rate of oxygen used by the stick insect at the temperature of 18 degrees. So 18 degrees is about here, 18 for my side and I'm getting about 1.05 okay, as my uh, rough estimate. So the answer is 1.05 millimeter cube per milligram per minute. So again, units are very important. Okay, and your axis has to be correct. Plot in the correct position. The line has to be correct and all um, necessary details has to be added into it here also. Okay. So if there's nothing related to this paper anymore, feel free to ask me any questions if you have. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.